thank you all for coming out today as we usher in a new era of Nebraska football. As I stated just five days ago, I have high standards and expectations for all of our athletic programs. I want us to compete for Big Ten championships and national championships. But those pursuits are meaningless unless we do it the right way, with class, sportsmanship, and integrity. We will win with young men and women who want to earn their degrees and who will represent us the Nebraska way. Nebraska is a special place. Our passionate students, administrators, faculty, our successful alumni, our fans, our generous supporters, and our fellow Nebraskans deserve the best. Our student athletes are at the core of everything that we do, and we are blessed to have some of the nation's finest coaches teaching our student athletes. Today, we add another outstanding coach and teacher to this great university. Mike Riley is a tremendous football coach, a man of high character and virtue, a wonderful husband and father, the son of a football coach. Mike played for Coach Bear Bryant at Alabama. During his time, they won three Southeastern Conference titles and a national championship. Before embarking upon a coaching career that has spanned almost four decades, as an assistant coach and as a head coach, both at the collegiate and at the professional level. His teams play sound, physical football, and Mike has a track record of evaluating and developing talent. In speaking to knowledgeable football people around the country, Mike is held in high regard for his football intelligence on both sides of the ball, for his approach in teaching the game, for his ability to get the most out of his student athletes. He is a great recruiter, a great motivator, and I'm confident his staff will only complement his exceptional abilities. Simply, we will win with Mike, but more importantly, our student athletes will have an amazing experience under his leadership. Mike has had many opportunities to leave Corvallis for other destinations, but chose to stay in his adopted hometown and build a solid and respected winner. It would take a special place and a perfect fit for him to move, and we are fortunate that he found that in Nebraska. We welcome Mike and his wife Dee, his daughter Kate and grandson Eli, are tired and sleeping at the i house, so we're, we're pleased with that. And his wonderful son, Matt, and daughter-in-law, uh, daughter Lydia, uh, uh, are in Austin, Texas. My, uh, Matt works uh, at the University of Texas. We've got to get him turned around there. There were many opportunities, there will be many opportunities for Nebraskans to meet Mike in the coming months, and I hope you will all take the time to get to know him. This is a special man. It is my great pleasure to introduce to you Nebraska football coach Mike Riley. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you, Sean. Thank you, Chancellor Perlman, for uh, the opportunity to be here. Um, we are grateful for that. Uh, Dee and I have been around the block a little bit, but not for a while, so this is uh, it's exciting. Uh, we are excited to be here. I'm excited to coach uh, this football team. Uh, we're excited to be in Lincoln, be part of the university, uh, and to uh, be a part of what is known as the greatest fan base in college football. Pretty special stuff. And uh, very excited about that. Appreciate uh, just the fact that I'm standing here right now and, and very thankful for that. I like coaching football. Uh, 
and I've coached now for 40 years. As I've gotten uh, more experienced instead of older, I, I have uh, really enjoyed what is uh, so important, I think, to the university is the growth of young men in all ways. Uh, I think that there are lots of choices that are made out there and as you know we, we spend all of our time as as parents teaching our children to make good choices that's what we get to do at the university level with the students and student athletes here is continue to help them make good choices to grow uh, and that growth you know when I'm talking about uh, that people usually go right into football and we certainly want that but it it's talking about all the areas of what we try to do at the university. You know, it's football, it's school, and ultimately it's life. And what a great time to be involved with these young men at, at the age they're at. So um, I really am thankful for being a part of their lives at this age. Uh, and for me personally, I never even knew what else there was to do but be a football coach. I grew up on the bus when my dad was a high school coach um, in northern Idaho. Was always in the locker room. My dad was a high school history teacher and football coach, baseball coach, basketball coach and that's what I was going to be and I went to college and got my history degree and I've never taught history. <laughs> but but uh, that's always what I thought was going to be my occupation was that. Uh, I, have, uh, I have to say here that I'm very thankful to all the folks that I got to work with at Oregon State. Every place that you get to go to in your life, you bring something from, and I got a lot more from Oregon State than they got from me. It was a great place. I appreciate the, that opportunity. They gave it to me twice. I was there two different times. and. And Sean's right, uh, we were, you know, this, I think that these, these people and this place, it just, for me, to make this move, it seemed like the right time. However, however you get to that point, uh, you know, when hearing upon the interest, when, when talking to him, uh, when talking to the chancellor, when, when you put it that all together, it, it just felt like this might be that right time. So I'm thankful for that interest, and mine is, is the same. We are, we are in this together uh, to build young men and win championships, and they don't have to be exclusive of one another. We're going to do it right, and we're going to do it, we're going to work hard. One of the basic ingredients to success is hard work, and, and that's always, that always feels good uh, when you can accomplish something after doing that in whatever you're trying to do. So thank you all for being here. Uh, thank you once again for this great opportunity. I'm going to be hiring a staff. Uh, I'm certainly, I've had a great group of people. I always look at this thing as I've, I've got all these guys and it's my job to make sure I put experts and good people around them. So we're going to look, uh, you know, and I've had really good people do really good work with me for a while and I like that stability. I know who they are, trust them. And with that, we're also going to look at other areas for other additions to this staff. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a big, big part of what's going to happen in the next few years is putting this group together football-wise and people-wise and making sure it's the right fit for what we do in, in, the, in the football end of it, but also what we need in the university end of it. Uh, so that's, that's pretty exciting stuff. I, I, uh, I won't be uh, coaching in the bowl game. I'll have fun being a fan for that game. That'll be different, uh, but it, that will be fun. We will obviously uh, begin, and it really is begin the, the, rec the recruiting 
process for our new staff and and not have a long time ahead of us to do it so like we'll probably start this afternoon with some stuff that's how fast this thing will go and so that those things are like the first things coming up staffing recruiting and then then where we go from there heading toward a uh, really great part of the year which is spring practice later on okay I don't know what, if what I'm supposed to do should I open it up yeah coach Riley welcome to Nebraska thank you um, at the age of 61 you could have retired at Oregon State yet you decide to come to Nebraska tell me what was behind your decision yeah, you know I I have I, I've never Dean and I have never talked about that retirement word so it, it, it didn't really enter into I, anything more than opportunity and maybe uh, the right place at the right time that that's probably it uh, you know the uh, I think if I summarized that that would that would be it I really always thought I was probably going to that was going to be my last job uh, but be and it's 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 the place but it's also the people and the people probably key making a decision like that uh, with the folks that I met with and, and the knowledge that I've had about Sean. Uh, Co Coach Riley, uh, what was your knowledge of Nebraska football before you took this job and how closely had you followed the program here over your coaching career? Well, m my knowledge of football uh, about ne Nebraska probably just goes back as to what everybody knows is Nebraska football nationally. That was me, except w I was a freshman on that team that Johnny Rogers ran all over in the Orange Bowl against uh, Alabama uh, and so I, I'm, I'm, I'm deeply respectful of history and tradition in our world of college sports and, and Nebraska has it so as a kid who's a kind of a football junkie growing up it, w it was easy to know about Nebraska in that way I have great admiration for the history of coaching that's gone on here Coach Osborne, I've always kept his one of his books uh, on on my in my bookshelf that I will draw quotes from as I go down for the team meeting of the day. Uh, a great example for coaches is Coach Osborne, and obviously a great track record of success on the on the field. Uh, I've got great. I I didn't mention this, and I need to. I've got great respect for the work that Bo did here. I understand this profession, know how it goes, grew up in it. My dad later became a professional coach, so I've seen all the different parts. I know there are hard parts. I know it's hard for the players right now with the uncertainty of who's this next guy and what's going to go on here. But I respect what Bo has done and the, and the work that they've uh, put into the universe, University of Nebraska football program. Uh, and like I said, just in general, the great football history here is pretty special. You can't buy tradition. You can't buy history like this. And so for me, it's, uh, it's, unique. it's, it's unique and it's great to be a part of. Good morning. Good morning, Mike. Uh, talk a little bit about the differences between Nebraska and Oregon State in terms of resources. I know you haven't been here long. But talk a little bit about that, and furthermore, when, when, when the job was on your radar and, and how quickly this process moved for you? Well, this was a quick process, and, and you know, I think that resource-wise, I think everybody, I, I tend to be kind of one of those guys that looks at the bright side and an optimist, so what you have, you enhance, and what you don't have, you try to make better. So it's not really comparing and contrasting is not that important to me. Uh, I, this thing did go very fast. Uh, that's always hard in our profession. You know, sometimes they, some jobs I think take months and visits and all that. That's not the way it works in our world. So, uh, you know, with an initial contact with Sean until today, it was a short period of time. I guess that was, what was that, Tuesday? Monday? Uh, Monday to today. So uh, it didn't take too long. That's probably good. Uh, there's a trust there when you do these kinds of things that's important so that's what we did 
Yeah, Mike, uh, you'd, in building your staff, you had mentioned you've been around some, some guys that you know and trust. Can you say who you're going to bring with you and who is the identity of some of your assistant coaches at this point? You know, I'd rather not, and some of them that I intend to bring don't even know it yet, so it would be better if I didn't mention their name. Uh, so if we can hold off on that, I don't think it'll be too long before we can announce some guys, but I, I, I don't uh, feel comfortable right now. Mike, you're known for running a pro-style offense. Are you planning to bring that to Nebraska or just evaluate the potential you have and go? You know, I think that uh, we've kind of run a smorgasbord of offense, but it, I guess people call it a pro-style because we've huddled and we've gone underneath the center and gotten the ball, actually, uh, for a good bit of it. But we spent a lot of time through the years in the shotgun, and I'm kind of very interested, according to the ability of the players, to to morph into a little bit more uh, of what we might could do. I've been excited at looking at that for a bit. Uh, we certainly have to establish an identity and the identity has to be a blend of, of a system with what the players are you know, comfortable with and good at. Uh, I think that's coaching. You know, you, you take your talent and you make sure it's the right fit for the system and you adapt the system as best you can to the, to, to the team. Uh, and, of course, quarterbacking is probably the number one place to look at that, right? Uh, so I'm excited about uh, the, you know, I, I've, we've had a foundation. We've had really good runners uh, in our program, tailbacks. we got a... We've had four of them that are on a wall back, back at uh, Oregon State that gained a total of 16,000 yards. And then we just had a quarterback that broke the Pac-12 career passing record. So we've, we've, we've had that and we had a receiver last year break the single season re receiving record. So we've had a variety of different ways to do it and it all depends on who they are uh, as to what we emphasize and go forward. That's probably the, the biggest deal for me. I haven't got a chance to watch these guys play. I, I really don't know this team. That's, that's kind of a fun process, but it'll take some time to do that. And then getting the staff together to do that. So there's, there's still quite a few unknowns about system. But, uh, that, yeah, that's what we've done before. Hey, hey, Mike, have you met with any of the assistants from the previous staff here at Nebraska, and do you plan to interview any of those guys? Yes, I plan to talk to him. I met with Barney last night uh, for a bit, and it was great. He was very helpful, uh, and I think that, you know, with this, this staffing, I think it's important to, you know, not, I think that it's hard for these guys, right? I mean, they're invested here, and they, they're coaching a game, and so, and I don't know any of them very well, uh, so we'll see if there's a possibility of a blend, but I cannot make any statement or promises about that. And I, and, and I need to really look at the big picture, but yes, I'll, I would love to talk to them, and that's what Barney and I talked about last night. Coach, um, two years ago you beat Wisconsin and Corvallis when they were ranked 13th. What are your thoughts of playing against teams in the Big Ten Conference? You know, the, this, this whole idea of now being in the Big Ten and, and coaching in this conference also was part of the appeal, actually. Uh, you know, the, I love going to different places, stadiums. As we played at Oregon State, we've been down at uh, LSU. We've been back to Penn State. Uh, we played in, uh, I don't even know the name of Jerry's World there in uh, Dallas. Uh, we've, we've done that. Uh, so it'll be, I like that, just the, I love, remember, I used to bug D when we were driving through across the country, let's stop and look at the stadium, and she could not ever understand that, really, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I also think this is a great conference with great history, and uh, it will be interesting and, uh, and hopefully fun as, as we win to to play these new teams. Hey, Mike. Uh, to say the least, it was a, a, a quite a surprise for a lot of Nebraskans when you're named coach. And, and Sean had prefaced uh, his comments with 
uh, wanting to have Nebraska in position to play for championships. Uh, I guess at Oregon State and in the NFL, that wasn't the case for you. Uh, what would you tell folks out there about why they should have confidence that you can get it done here? Well, I, I think that uh, I am, first of all, uh, I think that overall, f the f preparation for football and, and the ability to recruit and to fit in the talent of our team uh, with what we do will give us a great opportunity to win. Uh, what you're always searching for is prepping yourself to win. And we have a couple of times positioned ourselves at Oregon State at the last game of the season. If we won, we were going to the Rose Bowl. So we've been on the brink of that at that place. And I'm uh, very confident in with the history and the performance of Nebraska in general in football coupled with hard work and what we do as coaches will we were searching for that opportunity to win championships. Hi coach. Um, yesterday when searching for clips of you and in, in practice we run across water balloon fights and what have you a dunk tank is and, and we also ran across the fact that you open practices not only to the media but to the fans are those practices likely to continue here at Nebraska oh boy those water balloon fights were not my idea but <laughs> but but uh, I actually like them you know it, we, we do some stuff uh, I've got some younger folks that have been in the program will probably come with us that think of kind of just a break in the day during the fall camps for the players uh, found them to be you know for me in the old days it was we wouldn't do that stuff because we'll just take 10 more minutes of practice or 10 more minutes of meetings. But I found it to be a breath of fresh air. Uh, I have had, I don't, I don't know, I, don't, I won't make any commitment to this right now, but we have had open practices at Oregon State. It's, it's smaller than this place, so I usually know most of the people that are watching practice. Uh, and... Uh, I've got a lot of retired like coaches that come and sit down with their chair and watch practice for the day and I've always thought I want to be that guy one day. I want somebody to let me come in and watch practice. Uh, um, but I, I don't know. You know I, I know that it gets a little unwieldy too and, and uh, so if there's too many people then you probably have to shut it down a little bit but that's been our history. Coach, you had a chance to meet with some of the players last night. What was your message to them, and, and what did you kind of talk about there? Well, I had fun at the meeting. I, 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 I saw a, a group of very attentive young men, and, and I just visited them with them a little bit and told them I was just proud to, to be here, uh, that I know that they're, they're, you know, they're, they're facing a time of uncertainty, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, and that's not going to go away just because we're talking about it right now. It's going to take some time to get past all that. Uh, it all goes with knowledge and then trust as, as time goes on. Um, so we talked about things like that. And then I was very impressed because they almost one by one, a you know, hundred and some guys, I think, it seemed like it, came by one by one and we shook hands and they said who they were and said it was nice to meet me. And, and I just, that's just a small thing, but I was really impressed by it. Uh, it was, it was, you know, from my deal, my vantage point, it was a very comfortable meeting. And uh, I hope it was for them. Because it is, it is for players like my own back at Oregon State and my own here, it's, it's two different forms of transition, but there, it creates an uncertainty for them with people that have recruited them, coached them. So they're kind of in this world. So we got to start building that back. Mike, you, you mentioned recruiting a little bit back. Have you given much thought or a few minutes yet to the difference, the challenge will be here, and kind of where and how you'll go about things? It seems like it'll be different, but I'll tell you, in one, one thing in general, recruiting has, has really uh, grown for everybody in a national sense. I have... You know, looking at the roster, it seems like there's guys from everywhere here, which has probably been the way it has been historically. Uh, 
but for us, like last year, and I just say this in terms of, you know, we've, we've get, had now had experience. We had a receiver from Knoxville, a lineman from Chicago, a lineman from a little town in northeastern Iowa, a guy from Minnesota, a linebacker from Oklahoma, two guys from Texas, three guys from Hawaii. So we, we even, so our, our uh, roots are out there pretty big in recruiting already. And I think that's probably more of the name of the game for everybody these days uh, because of the access we have now of information and, and video from all over the country. It's, it's really crazy from just a few years back, big, big time difference. Mike, what generally was your thought process like? If you can kind of take us a little bit through the week after you met or, or talked on the phone, I, I assume, with, was it in person or on the phone with, with Sean? And, um, you know, when did you well, initial, when did you warm up to this? Uh, it was, was it right away? And did you, did you take this sight unseen or had you, had you seen this place uh, at any time recently? This part, I've seen it on TV. That's, a, that's how, how I've seen it. And, uh, uh, we we talked on Tuesday, and then I, m I met with the chancellor on Wednesday. Wednesday, we s yeah, spoke on Monday, Tuesday spoke yes. So things picked up and accelerated into a point of of right here, and uh, you know we. We had heard enough, and you can see enough if you look on the internet of what a place is like. Not that that's always accurate, but uh, we kind of trusted the situation through the history, and it was pretty easy to do that way. It's a matter, really, at this point, of if you want to do something like that, right? I mean, you're getting to the point, if, you know, it, at the stage of my career, it was, it was. An opportunity to try something one more time. You know, we've had great experiences. I've enjoyed every one of them uh, that I think have all built to who we are uh, as people, as a family, uh, as a career. So, if you're going to if you're going to do it one more time, this obviously is a, a great chance to do that at a great place. Mike, your teams have, have struggled the last five years. I'm curious how you think you've gotten better as a head coach during those struggles. What have you learned about yourself? That is, that's a great point. I think that uh, one thing that you have, to, you have to get good at sometimes, because we, we, have, we have actually been pretty cyclical, right, at Oregon State. We've been, we were three and nine one year, nine and three, and and so I think what you have to do is you, you have to, as a staff, as head coach, show some stability in, in, to your team in the fact that you can come back and you can do better. It might be the next week. It might end up being the next season. But you've got to be able to do that and teach your players how that works. Lose a game or not have a great season, but have that ability. This is, and then the other thing you have to do is you have to give them concrete stuff as to how it's going to get better. So that's what we've always had to deal with. Hopefully, we've gotten better at it as we've gone along. Uh, you know, in, in this sport, you're gonna, you're gonna, even no matter who you are, you're going to have some cycles. So you've got to know how to handle those cycles. Uh, whether it's doing really well and how you handle that or you're having a rough time. Uh, you've got to be able to work with your team, give them concrete evidence about how this is going to get better, and then teach it. So that's through the years, I would say that that's probably something you always have to have in hand and get better at it, you know, which is always what we're trying to do, find that better way to teach. How are we going to do things? Uh, you know, we recruit in a, just like we have recruited while I was at Oregon State, and I'm sure it's the same here. It's all very competitive. Uh, so we're trying to get the best players all the time and then coach them the best we can. And we want players that are the right fit as the person with the character that we need in the program. And then you just keep coaching them and teaching them and be ready for good times, hard times, in between, all that. 
Mike, as you look up to the outside for your staff, what specifically are you looking for in our Nebraska ties important with that? You know, I think the, the most important thing to me uh, is to gain a trust of who this person is in two ways. Uh, and, and it could come from any different source. You know, Nebraska, uh, current staff, the staff I've been with, and whoever else might be out there in the world, but they have to have two qualities. They have to be experts uh, at whatever it is. If it's a linebacker coach, then that's got to be his expertise, and he's got to be good at it. And the other thing, he has to be the right guy. He's got to treat people right. And I told the players last night, that means more you know, than, than what that just says. That has to do with discipline. That has to do with growth. That has to do with a, a real vision for helping this young man in all the ways. Uh, so, but those two things are, have to be part of it. Doesn't matter if, without those two things who this guy is. We, this is just what we need to get started on the staff. And so we'll have, you know, and then they'll all have obviously, they've got to find coordinators. Uh, I've always had a uh, full time special teams coach. Uh, that that's all he's done, uh, hasn't coached other positions, so I'm pretty sure we'll do that again. Hey, Mike, uh, there's four coaches, you know, that, that have been in Nebraska are still around, that being Tom Osborne, Frank Solich, Bill Callahan, and Bo Pelini. Um, what have been your experiences with those, with those guys over the years? Do you know any of them, and have you reached out to any of them, or do you plan to reach out to any of them? Yes, I'd like to reach out to all of them. I actually uh, sit by... Frank Solich at the, we are on the AFCA board together, so we we've, we've sat next to each other often and talked, and I really like Frank. I'm, I'm I appreciate him. Uh, I feel like I know Bill Callahan. Just kind of followed his football all along and enjoyed that. And the same with uh, Coach Osborne. I, he doesn't know me, and he he wouldn't remember this. But uh, when I was coaching in the Canadian League, got this call picked up the phone and and the, the guy says hi Mike this is Tom Osborne and I was sure somebody was pulling a trick on me I, but he <laughs> that was my contact with coach Osborne and and uh, he had called me about a player that he was recommending uh, to our team in the Canadian League so but I I, I think that uh, I think that's absolutely great uh, history of coaches that are here like I mentioned earlier and and I look forward to getting to know everybody more you know like I haven't been here ever in my life uh, but I know what kind of a place it is just because I follow it I know college football and I know the people that have been been involved in the teaching and the coaching here know of them Coach, you talked about recruiting a little bit. Uh, have you given any thought to this class or been in touch with those kids yet? Or kind of what is the plan going forward to try to keep this recruiting class it's together? It's hitting it right now real hard. In the recruiting area, we, we've got to go because there's really one more week of where, where you can do home visits, and then it shuts down for quite a while. So we'll try to do the mo uh, as, as much as we can in this next week, make a plan for the month of January, and and then go forward from there. But we've got to get started with some of that immediately. Coach Riley, uh, one of the great success stories here at Nebraska has been the walk-on program. Yeah. What is your philosophy about walk-ons, and what would your, be your message to the high school seniors here in Nebraska? Well, I think, uh, I, I think that's historically been one of the neat things about Nebraska, Nebraska football, the, the tradition of uh, so many walk-on players, the contribution they have made to the program. Uh, and believe me, I am all for it. I think the, and, and I've got personally some of the greatest walk-on stories that, that uh, if, you, if you have time, I'll tell you a couple of them. But it is, uh, I think it's great. I, I, I think that they add tons to the program. You abs absolutely need them uh, in the program, I think, to function properly. And so many guys find their niche, you know, if they really, you know, the, if they fit physically at all and they work hard, they'll find something that they do. We had, I showed up at Oregon State 2003, 
and there was a walk-on receiver, this is spring practice, that was going to be a sophomore, redshirt sophomore, and he looked okay in spring practice, and then in fall camp he started making some plays, and we had an All-American receiver he was playing behind, so I said, why don't we move this Mike over to the flanker, see if he can win the job, and he did. And he caught like 44 passes for 1,000 yards. So the yards per catch was over the top. Well, that same guy, he had been a walk-on. He got a scholarship after that. But two years later, he won the Bolitnikoff Award as the top receiver in America. On that, in that same year, we had a walk-on kicker that won the Lou Groza Award. And my first year at Oregon, second year at Oregon State, we had a walk-on quarterback that, and this was back in an era at Oregon State where they'd had 28 straight years of losing seasons. So we stuck a, uh, a, we had a guy that had walked on. I had encouraged him to walk on from uh, Glendora, California. He, uh, he always moved the team, you know, it looked good in practice. And so we were still looking, our second year there, looking for opportunities for quarterbacks, for people to get a chance. <clears throat> and we were fighting to come back and build that program. So I just said, we should let this guy play. Let's put him in. We're going to play Washington. Let's put him in at the start of the second quarter. Well, he didn't get in until midway in the second quarter of that game. And he threw for 469 yards in two and a half quarters. He was a walk-on quarterback. Nobody knew who he was. And he, he later led that team, Oregon State team, to the Fiesta Bowl. And he's coaching now. And when I first met him, this is what I like about these stories, is when I first met him, he was not being recruited by anybody. And all he wanted to do was find a place where he could go and play football and mostly prepare himself to be a coach. And little did he know or anybody know that this guy would become one of Oregon State's all-time greatest quarterbacks. And when he walked in the door when I wanted to meet him, because I'd seen him on film and thought he was threw the ball pretty well. It was just this scrawny little 5'10 kid. And so your first thought is, well, this is not a major college quarterback. But his career was unbelievable. So there's a, there's, I'm sorry to take so long, but that's the walk-on deal. I, I love it. And we, we've got a walk-on from Oregon State, a walk-on tackle that's still now playing in the NFL. All, all sorts of good stuff. And I know Nebraska probably has a ton of good stories like that. Uh, thanks, Coach. Thank you all. It's, it's nice to be here. Well, we are wrapping up the news conference as Husker Nation is introduced to the new Nebraska head coach, Mike Riley. 37 minutes at the podium answered <laughs> a bevy of questions. Uh, your first impressions of Mike Riley. He seemed very personable. He seemed very personable. I was impressed that he could remember after 40 years of coaching the stories that he just told us about some of those players still fresh in his mind. It goes to show you he, he emphasized good people. He mm -hmm. wanted to be around good people. Yeah. And uh, he, he said uh, that drew the parallel between uh, being a coach and a parent and continuing that parent parental relationship throughout college and taking over when the parents give over their child to him. Mike so and, a good guy, me. and we'll see uh, we'll see uh, where that takes him. Absolutely, and you know what? He's not going to waste any time because he says beginning this afternoon he's going to get right to staffing, working on recruiting, and really learning this team. He hasn't seen them. He just met them last night. He doesn't know what they can do. Although he says he'll enjoy watching <laughs> the bowl game, but I mean he has a lot to do, and he's going to get right to it. He said the meeting with the players was comfortable. That's important to know. Mm -hmm. He said it's a difficult time for them, so he understands what they're going through. After all, he's going through the same thing on the other end of the spectrum. Uh, only one week open left in this open recruiting period where they can go out and make in-home visits. That's crucial, crucial to be able to uh, get some top recruits. We understand Sean Eichhorst is now taking some questions at the podium. We want to go back live to Lincoln to listen uh, in on that. And, um, you know, I think one of the things that I've said since I've been here, and I, hopefully I've done over the course of the last couple years, is to uh, look, listen, and learn. And that not only applies to Nebraska, but that applies to every place I've been. Um, and, you know, my job on a day-to-day -day basis is to put um, this university in a good position to be successful on a lot of levels. And so, um, for me, uh, I think you guys all know what my characteristics are uh, and, and what I um, am motivated by and the desires that I have and the people that are working and teaching with 
um, with our young people. And so um, for me, uh, Mike's been on my radar for, oh, probably uh, 10 years. Um, when I was down in Carolina, um, when we had a, a coaching change there, um, I started to, uh, I was mentored by Coach Mike McGee at South Carolina, and, and I really got close to him, and I didn't really ask a lot of questions. I just watched and listened to what he did and, and how he developed characteristics and, and how he went about his searches and that sort of stuff. And so Mike came on the radar uh, mainly because he was a great football coach. He's an elite coach. He's a teacher. You know, he's un he has unique skills and abilities relative to the fact that he's coordinated both sides of the ball. And you heard it, what, what, what he thinks about special teams. That's an important part of the deal. And, um, and so, uh, um, uh, and, and, you know, the process went pretty quickly for me. Uh, you know, I got home Sunday night um, and uh, after meeting with the team and took a deep breath. And I don't think I uh, have slept since then. Um, I got right into it. Um, uh, my, my, uh, my, again, the list of my characteristics and the things that I wanted in a coach and the fit and all that sort of stuff were there. Um, and I wasn't looking at people at that point. I was just thinking about qualities in people. And then when you go through the, you know, the list and you, you think about the people who are good fits and who you might be able to get, it's a tough business to move elite coaches from Power Five conferences. I don't think the statistics bear out very well that you're able to do that. Um, and so uh, quickly in my mind, um, Sunday morning, uh, I, I was fixed on Mike and uh, I reached out to him to see if he'd be interested in the job. Um, he was. And at that point, um, I recruited my tail off like I've never done before. Um, I was focused. I was locked in. I knew what I wanted. And uh, um, it just so happened that Harvey was in San Francisco. And uh, Mike, I said, Mike, where are you? And he goes, I'm going recruiting in San Francisco. And so I said, well, this, this might be meant to be. And so I got a hold of Harvey and I said, can, uh, can we spend some time with Mike? And he said, yes. And we had a great visit on Tuesday. Um, and Mike left the room and I looked at Harvey and I said, uh, you know, I think this is our guy. And he said, yep. Um, I called Mike back and we talked about uh, whether it would be a good fit and the parameters of the deal and uh, um, then went home and uh, um, Harvey and I uh, did our due diligence, put an agreement together, uh, went through the process uh, with um, discussing that uh, agreement with uh, Interim President Linder and General Counsel Joel Peterson and our wonder wonderful executive committee of the Board of Regents and uh, Wednesday night we had a ball coach. Sean, what's the what's your level of concern about just the the record? I mean, the the wins and losses because uh, you know, as many fans pointed out yesterday, Mike's record, especially over the past five years, isn't terribly impressive. I, I have zero concern about that. I, I you know, I think I talked about that a few days ago. About it's not a, it's not always about the outcomes. It's about it's 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 about the circumstances. It's about the people. Um, you know, I, I'm looking forward. We have an elite football coach who now has an incredible history and tradition behind him, um, incredible resources, a passionate fan base. Um, what I've seen over the course of the last 24 hours with our team and our former players, and I know there's uncertainty in our fan base, but we have a good football coach, and I think folks are ready and excited to unite and take this program to where it should be. And so um, I, I'm not, you know, through my lens as I'm looking for characteristics in a person who I want to work with our young people, um, we're going to have success. Um, I know that. And, uh, we, um, and, and you can hear it in Mike's voice. Uh, he, he's a football coach. That's who he is. He's not defined by that, but that's who he is. He's a teacher, and he puts himself and others around him in a position, I think, to be successful. I think you've got to look at some of those big games that he's had, where he's been, and some of the things he's been able to do, um, and it's been quite remarkable. Hey, Sean. Hey, uh, just a point of clarification. You, you'd said that you locked in on Mike. I think you said Sunday morning. Did you mean Monday morning? Uh, yes, Monday. Thanks, Eric. Yeah. 
Sean, other than the uh, the conversation that you and Chancellor Perlman had with them on Tuesday, what other kind of uh, um, research did, did did this entail for you? Were there coaches or administrators um, who you're familiar with, who were, who you had a connection with that, that knew of Mike and could give him a recommendation for you? That's a good question, Mitch. Uh, good morning. Um, I, I've, as I stated earlier, th this. Um, uh, and I've watched a lot of searches from afar. I've been a part of them. Um, I've never felt that the um, that the clean ones, the successful ones, were done right in that moment. And so, I again, um, uh, I think that over time I've prepared myself. Uh, I've I've done a couple of these. I've been a part of a couple of these. So, uh, over time, I, I have um, I have a lot of trusted mentors that I respect. Um, not only coaches, I think you got to look at non-traditional people too as you evaluate candidates because of the bias associated with relationships and that sort of stuff. So, you know, I, I'm around a lot of lawyers that represent institutions, um, compliance folks. I listen to NFL scouts because they're here all the time. You know, I, I, uh, I listen to high school coaches. Um, I listen to journalists. I like you guys. I do. Um, you may not think so. You may not think I'm listening, but I am. Um, you know, and you can learn things along the way. And so, um, uh, and, and in order to do these things in a very professional, swift manner, particularly when you're trying to get an elite football coach, um, you, you got to be decisive and you got to be quick. And, um, and so, uh, Mitch, to answer your question, uh, a lot of what uh, the, due, the due diligence was, was had already been done. Um, certainly, I had dug deeper into his background, um, you know, Sunday night and Monday, and, and then certainly into Tuesday. Um, uh, and, I, and I, quite frankly, again, I think the fit and the characteristics um, came together uh, relatively quickly, and, and uh, we got a really good football coach. Uh, Sean, uh, on Sunday in your news conference, you said in the recent years, Nebraska had lost games that mattered. Uh, when you look at uh, Coach Riley's resume and you see that he's beaten a number one, a number two, and a number three ranked team out there in uh, the Pac-12, how much of an impact did that have on your decision when you see he's been beating uh, top ranked teams? It certainly was a factor um, in, in what I was looking for. Um, you know, beating a number six Arizona State team this year um, I, I think was an incredible achievement with with um, his ball club, um, but again, it's not it's not about one loss or, or one win. I think it's a, a track record, and um, uh, you know you can you can be strayed, you can be distracted by all those outcome things, statistics, all that other sort of stuff. Um, I'm looking at people, and 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 I got a good person who is an exceptional football coach. Hey, Sean, there is a perception that you, you know, that you haven't made a high-profile hire, but you, you say you've been involved in such hires. Where, where was that? Who are we talking about? Sure. Those types of things. Well, uh, number one, I hired Jim Laranega at Miami, and last time I looked, second year was in the Sweet 16, and I think they're in the top 20 this year. And um, uh, so I, I, I think I do have a pretty good track record of hiring high-profile uh, elite uh, coaches. Um, certainly, having been at Wisconsin, um, uh, we've we've uh, uh, we've hired some some coaches. Not not at, in the bigger sports like football and basketball, but I was intimately involved in um, uh, hiring Steve Spur at the University of South Carolina uh, with Coach McGee. Um, and uh, and again, I, I you know I think that if you study, if you take time to evaluate, you don't necessarily have to be on the inside. But I've talked to a lot of administrators and a lot of coaches about how it went, okay? And why didn't it work? Why did it work? You know those sorts of things. So uh, hopefully, in some ways, I've learned along the way, and and I've been disciplined enough to. Um, um, to steal other people's ideas about how you do things. But, um, you know, I think if you get decisive, you know what you want, and you're swift, um, you, you, can, you can get some things done. Sean, it's, it, it, Sean how, how important was it to you to have somebody who has sat in the head coach's chair as opposed to maybe a, a coordinator who's had success but hasn't experienced what it's like to, to have that head coach role? Good question. Um, 
You know, again, I, I think I would go back to just, just elite characteristics in a person, in a coach. Um, I think you guys have heard me say this before. They, they come in all shapes and sizes. You know, it's fire brimstone, it's relaxed, uh, it's in the middle. Um, you know, we've seen coaches in this business uh, be really successful coming from all different areas. So um, uh, I was just looking at the big picture, not really thinking too much about that. Although um, I think at a place like Nebraska, with all its great history and tradition and resources, experience matters. Take one more. Sean, you hired a coach who's, who's 61 years old, uh, who, was, who was at home, who was probably a couple years from retirement. At what point in the process uh, were you certain that he was up for this? You know, that, that he was... From the first phone call. Really? Yes. Why? Well, l l let, me, let me just digress one second. Uh, I, I hired another 60, 62-year-old ball coach in Jim Laranega, and he's going to be coaching for a long time, I can tell you that. Um, and this is a son of a football coach. This is what he does. He's not looking to retire. He's going to coach his butt off as long as he can. And, and when we were talking, I could sense in his voice uh, what a great opportunity for me um, to come to a great place like Nebraska and work with the quality of young people. Um, and I, I could just sense um, uh, excitement and inspiration. And, and, um, and so in that, I felt, I never, I never really get caught up in the, the age thing and all that other sort of stuff because uh, I just don't think that that matters at the end of the day. You know, Steve came in for us at Carolina at 60, 61. Look at him. You know, he's still rolling, and I, last time I looked, he had like three 11-win seasons in a row, and he tells me about it every time I talk to him, too. So, um, so uh, no, I didn't. Uh, th this guy, you're going to find out real quickly. Um, and the other thing is, is, you know, Mike and I go about our business somewhat similar, um, but um, don't for a second, don't, don't for a second think that we're not competitive. This guy right here is as competitive as anybody I've talked to. And um, nobody wants to win more than we do. Um, but there's a way you go about doing that. All right, thanks everyone, appreciate it. Athletic Director Sean Eichhorst on his reasons for choosing Mike Riley as the head coach of Nebraska. He talked about the fact that Mike has been on his radar for the last 10 years, and he gave a list of some reasons why. Number one, he is an elite coach. Uh, two, he is a teacher. He talked about that quite extensively, how he, how he develops players. And has, football is just in his heart. He's, he's a football coach at heart. Well, he is, and Riley hinted on that in his press conference. He said his dad was a high school football coach yeah. in Idaho. He played for the great Paul Bear Bryant at Alabama, won three SEC titles, a national championship. He's also coached in the CFL, the NFL, and, of course, the NCAA at Oregon State and Nebraska. So this guy is football through and through. Yeah, he also mentioned he liked the fact that he had a focus on special teams. Did you catch that as I well? I did catch okay. that as well. Three areas of, uh, in the football game, offense, defense, mm -hmm. and special teams. And it almost seems it was meant to be. He mentioned, okay, we're going to go to, I'll get to that later, but let's go to Ross Jernstrom now, who has uh, witnessed all that we heard. Ross, what are your thoughts today? Hi, you guys. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, quite an impression there by Coach Mike Riley uh, in his opening press conference here at the University of Nebraska. I think you can see he's been through this before. Uh, he's uh, very impressive, uh, I've got to say. Uh, he brings quite a resume here to Lincoln. Uh, and I thought he embraced uh, a lot of the things that Nebraska has already in place. You know, the facilities here, the walk-on tradition which uh, has been such a success here at the University of Nebraska uh, to have him, you know, open his arms up to that. You know, he's got to bring smiles to a lot of high school players here in our state who dream of playing uh, at Memorial Stadium and being a Husker. So I think he hit the right notes today, and I think uh, people will be impressed. And um, it's not going to be on-the-job training for this guy. He comes well-prepared, and he has a passion for the game. I think at the age of 61, people might think, oh, he's, he's not here to uh, just kind of go through the motions. He's here to win a championship. And I could tell with Sean Eichhorst, uh, who spoke very passionately about uh, what he brings to the job. And uh, I think that I was very impressed with that.